What is going on, everybody? Hey, everybody, how you guys doing? My name is Ian Robinson. If you don't know who I am, I am a Max on ZBrush trainer, and we do these normal streams uh, every Wednesday between 10 and noon, Pacific Standard Time, uh, where basically I showcase projects and showcase how I make things. So hence the name, come see how it's made, uh, because this is what do we do. So hopefully you guys are doing a great time. What's going on, everybody? I see you guys, Chris and uh, Pradeep and Chase. Welcome back, everybody. Jaime, welcome back, Dean. It's so awesome to have you guys here. So I haven't actually done a stream for, I haven't done my regular stream all this year just yet. Been doing a lot of uh, Redshift uh, streams because we had a lot of guests come on and showcase um, how they've been using the new version of ZBrush. So if you have any interest in that, make sure you check out those series because we focused on that. Um, but today I thought we'd do uh, a new project where I'm sculpting something really cute and adorable. What's going on? Hey, Jason, how you doing? So the thing is, so <laughs> I got to shout out Anna Carolina. She's been doing a uh, building an Unreal world using ZBrush and taking you through the pipeline through uh, Unreal Engine. She's been doing that every Monday for the last few weeks, and she built this lizard creature that I thought was super adorable. And I have a few events this year that I want to showcase something cute and adorable as well. So I'm going to be sculpting a salamander because I'm like, I want to now sculpt one. So we're going to be doing a salamander today in the stream. But as always, if you guys have any questions, please, please, please feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for, to help you, to help answer questions. But uh, a little bit more on that real quick, just a slight teaser. We'll have some dates coming up soon. But um, as you're aware, last year, some of you may not be aware, but we actually created a website called AskZBrush.com. We got this up and running, but then we had a big release and a lot of stuff happened. So we're actually going to be bringing back as ZBrush videos, but we're going to be doing them for the most part live that then we'll be able to um, slice up the, the videos and, and get more videos out to you quickly. And this way too, if you guys don't know, you can actually come here and see questions that I'll be taking um, through the voting process. So we have a voting process here. So maybe you've asked a question that nine other people have asked and you can come up and upvote those questions. So if you're not aware of this, please go ahead and check this out because we will be doing streams dedicated to this, but I'll put a link in the chat too, just so that you guys have it. But outside of that, let's get started. Let's do some fun stuff. So I have a bunch of reference here and we're gonna be aiming for something like this little guy. This little guy is really, really adorable. Up here, hold on a second. Let's see, let me reshare that link. Okay, there we go, perfect. And let's actually doop, doop, doop. Okay, let's minimize that. So we're gonna be going for a little salamander character, but we're gonna put a twist on him. Eventually he'll be kind of standing in maybe a spacesuit and stuff. So I have some reference on my pure ref, which is just a breakdown of the different types of spacesuits that I'm gonna lean towards and some basic reference. I always start off really, really small with my with my reference because I don't want to overwhelm myself. So I get kind of a, a little mood board going and then I expand as I go. If I find any more reference, I go and I find that reference, but this should get me pretty well started. So we're gonna go something, <laughs> look at this, this is so adorable. We're gonna go something based on this. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and let's maybe dock this down here just so we can always see a little something and we'll do a basic block out. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Let me turn on my tablet. I'm gonna just go ahead and open up the default project. That's how I start 99.9% .9 of my projects. I just go ahead and I start from there. Let me get my glove on and let's get going. You have a question, CIA. Whew. Uh, when I mask an object, how can I get the sculpt menu to inflate or deflate my object? That's a great question. Great question. Here, we'll, we'll start that real quick. So masking is a very useful tool. Where's my brush? Boop, there it is. So masking is a super useful tool. And so what you want to do is you want to be able to, you want to be able to mask, you want to be able to mask an object and then you want to be able to inflate or deflate your object. So if you just mask an object here, then the e there's a couple ways to go about doing this. The simplest way that I actually find, which is not going under deformation, the simplest way is just bring up your gizmo by hitting W, holding control, and you can actually grab this little guy and scale this up. You can just boop, really, really simple. Um, you can inflate that, but with masking, maybe go to 
inflates under deformation, and you can inflate that. When you mean menu, though, when you say, uh, uh, how do I get the sculpt menu to inflate or deflate, the menu itself, yeah, just go under deformation. That would be where in the menu, and then you can either inflate or inflate balloon. So, yeah, that, that's how I would go about doing it, or you can use the scaling feature as well, which is always useful. That's, those are the ways I would go about doing it. You can also use the inflate brush too. We actually have one, B, I, and then where is it? I for inflate and then N, and then you can actually use that as well to protect yourself, um, if that's what you meant by your question. But let's go ahead and start getting a block out going. So I'm actually gonna do the thing that I preach, and sometimes I don't do it, but you should, is I'm gonna duplicate my sphere, hide this S one, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save as, and now I'm gonna go ahead and create a Salaman. Salaman. Salaman, there you go, spell. Spell, Salamander block out. I'll just call him the Salamander sculpt. There you go. You are so welcome, sir. Sculpt, go ahead and go in here. And then I'm gonna call this a Sal, a man. <laughs> You're all watching me like, can you spell? I cannot, Salamander block out. Now here's something that's really, really cool I wanna point out, it's new to 2023. So I'm gonna call this block out. I'm gonna underscore this zero, zero, 001, and I'm gonna go ahead and say enter. Now this is Hey, can you guys hear me okay? My mic just died. Okay, we're back. Technical difficulties has been a couple days. Um, so, hey, perfect, thank you. <laughs> this is how you know it's live because stuff like that happens. Okay, so what was new to 2023 is we actually add a, a new uh, saving iteration file, uh, not file format, a new saving iteration format where you can save as, you can save your current um, constantly without having to go to save as, or you could save next. So if I were to just hit save, it's gonna save over that ZTL no matter what without having to open that menu. But if I say save next, and now I'm just gonna open that file and say save as, you'll notice here it actually says salamander block out underscore zero zero two. So what you can do is when you're ready to save iterations, just start out with just that underscore and then some numbers that you would want. And then you could just say save next moving forward and life is good. So so that way, while you're working, you could just hit save. And these are hot keyable. So if, just like your normal hot key, you can go ahead and say, okay, I want save to be control S moving forward. And then it would say, yeah, you want to do that. This is a short key for something else. You say, okay. And then each time you're working on the project, control S will just save. So you can do that as well. The controls S is actually tied to the project, which is under file. So if I were to go to file, we also have save, save as, and save next. And you can see here that the hotkey is actually typically saved next to that subtool. This would be alt S. So from now on now, I can say control S and that's always gonna save my ZTL. So those are ways to go about doing that, which is super awesome. What is up, David? What is up, Sheldon? Welcome, welcome. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and start the block out process. I'm gonna take my move brush, so B, M, and then V for move brush. And because I have all these different types of salamander, what I'm actually gonna do is I wanna look at the, s the shape of the head. These creatures are really kind of simple in shape, but that's what I like about them because we kind of get to have a little bit of room for our own interpretation. So I'm gonna base maybe off of this guy and let's just get like a basic shape going. So I'm gonna turn the profile shape over, make sure that I have my symmetry turned on, and I'm gonna go ahead and start maybe popping up something like this. Let's move that down, not sure why that's there. Okay, great. So we're just gonna get a basic head shape. We're gonna keep it as low as possible. I typically work in Dynamesh when I'm doing more realistic things, but here I'm actually going to be maybe working a little bit more with, um, more on a stylized approach. So I'm actually gonna go to Z Remesher and I'm gonna break this down to maybe something like two. I'm gonna say Z remesh this so it's really low and then we'll use IMM brushes to move forward. There we go. 
relax and move that. Is my camera over the reference? Oh, it is. Thank you so much. Let's put that over there. <laughs> let's see how many errors we could do this stream. Thank you. That is perfect. There we go. So let's go over this guy right here. There. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So we're not going to be worrying about too many shapes. Uh, I'm sorry. We're not going to be worrying about too much detail. We're just kind of getting a, an overall shape. And maybe it's a little too much. So let's squish that down. All right. Now let's go with our basic IMM. Uh, our IMM primitives, so that's B, I, and then T. And then now I can just literally draw out certain spheres. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the sphere 32. I'm gonna drag this out. And for those of you who might be new to ZBrush, just note that when you draw an IMM brush out, it's actually gonna draw it out on the vertice that you're hovering over, and the normal is gonna snap to that vertice. So here I can actually drag this out and it's it's gonna be, the pole is facing where that vertice is at. So I can actually drag this out. And I'm going to be sculpting him kind of T-posed because he's gonna be a standing character. So there's gonna be room for a little bit of uh, interpretation here. So maybe let's get him bodied, laid out, and then we can adjust. Good morning, what's up, ta-da, how you doing? Okay, great. And we're going to relax, smooth this. And we're just going to go ahead and kind of stretch this out. I'm using the move inflate, by the way, and relax, smooth to kind of just stretch this mesh out and just get something, just get something in the position that looks halfway decent. And what's interesting, too, is that these guys are kind of like, they got like pretty interesting bellies. There we go. Let's push this out here. Got my sticky key going. Let's see. How do you approach not losing detail when you reach a certain limit where mesh is, where the mesh geometry gets too stretched out? That's a, that's a great question. So with, when you're working with details, the thing to remember is that all your details are going to be attached to the vertice itself. So all these points, that's what's capturing detail. So something like this, where I'm already stretching the mesh, the mesh too far out. In the beginning stages, you want to either, you want to pick a, a pipeline that works best for you. For me, the easiest thing to do is just not worry about the geometry in the beginning. But to your question, how do you, how do you, not lose detail when you're overstretching? Well, the thing is, is that you, we have a couple ways of doing that. We can actually project our details from one model onto another, or you can project history. So a lot, so in case here, let me just actually, let me just give you a quick demonstration how I would do that. I actually rely on project history when I need to project detail back. I don't worry about the mesh and how terrible it looks until I'm ready to move into actual refinement and detail. So if I were to like just make this quick line here, and then if I were to kind of like start stretching this out, in this block out phase, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I'm not really worried about that. But let's say here, I wanted to, re to Z remesh this. So I'm actually going to store this history point and then I'm gonna go ahead and Z remesh this, right? Now I'm gonna lose that detail because now I have to rebuild the mesh. So I would use project history in that case. There's always going to be an instance where you're going to overstretch the mesh when you're working on it to a point where you're gonna to have to either use one method like zebra mesher to capture more detail because subdivision works best for detail capture and then just focus on the uh on the project meshes to get that detail back which i do a lot when i work in dynamesh and then i z project that detail back on a zebra mesher but then at that point when your mesh is clean you don't really want to be trying to overstretch it so it is pipeline dependent on how you're working but in this case now that i've zero meshed that i can subdivide a couple times go up to sub tool and then I would say project. And then because I have this little indicator here, what I did was I control tapped at the top. I can go ahead and say project and that's gonna give me my detail back. So, and we actually do have an Ask ZBrush video on that as well. So I can actually link you to that a little bit more, um, but that's, that's the approach I would take. Okay, let me actually see if I can pull it up. Just so you can always have something to fall back on. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and actually our our very own Paul Gabriel did this for you. So there you go. All right, let's actually go back in time. Wee. 
So in this case, actually, like I'm stretching this mesh out here beyond, I can, I can actually just come through here at this point because I'm still blocking out, but I'm not using DynaMesh. What I'll do is I'll turn on keep groups and smooth groups, I'll turn that down to zero. And then I will just keep same and I will Z remesh this, or I'll pick something small like two and say Z remesh and then have something, something to work off of as I'm blocking this out. Now this looks super hideous, but that's okay. We're gonna get there, so. Let's come through here. Let's actually start pushing this down. So right now, I'm not really caring about too much. I just kind of want to get something that's going to be representative. And I'm going to be breaking him up into a few different chunks. So what I will do is I'm going to control tap, control shift tap on this mesh here. And I'm actually going to turn off symmetry. And then I'm going to control drag this out to give me a second mesh that I could play with, repurposing my mesh. And then let's turn symmetry back on. And then I'm going to invert the mask by hitting control and then tapping one time out here in space and then control W. That's going to give me a different uh, poly group. And what that will do is allow me to isolate that and get something that I can, I can actually play with. Doop, doop, doop. Hey, what's up, TL101 art? Yeah, it's nice to play around with the project approach. I usually try zero mesh it, but it would lose all the detail to the point where it's just all gone. Yeah, that's the thing you want to remember is that um, once you Z remesh, you're not going to be able to preserve a lot of that detail. You will always have some loss. And two, when you're Z remeshing, when you have uh, smooth groups on, your mesh is actually going to shrink a little bit. So I turn smooth groups off so my mesh doesn't shrink much at all, if at any. So those are little ways to go about doing that. Okay. So for right now, we have just we have literally just the valley of the suck as we call it. Now I'm going to turn perspective off. I don't usually work in perspective, but for right now, I'm actually going to maybe turn around. Let's actually get him positioned where he would be standing before we start putting the rest of them on there. And again, so we'll have he's a lizard, right? So let's actually let's do this. Let's rotate the whole mesh around. Let's send this back into a home position. That makes sense. And then let's actually move that there. Now, it's, there's another thing too I like to point out real quickly is that a lot of times I want to be able to move a mesh, but I don't want to keep masking everything out. So if you're doing block outs like this, you can go up to your brush and auto masking and turn on top of logical. And then the first mesh that you touch that's actually going to be the mesh that it isolates for you. So if I want to move this one around a little bit, I can move that. Or if I want to move just this guy around, I can do such. So if I'm making fine tune adjustments like such, this would be the way to go. But if I want to make a big change, I would still take this approach where I'd mask things out. And if your gizmo's active and I control shift tap a certain poly group, it will isolate just that one poly group. So I'm going to rotate this around. Maybe move this up this way because he's going to be standing. Clear this, and then now I'm going to go ahead and start adjusting this guy. And our salamander, he's going to be a lanky fella, much like me. There we go. Nothing chilling. Nice, nice, nice. What's up, Megan? Yeah, you got this. You got this. Whoop, whoop. Cool. So this will be just a little bit of a simple block out. Okay. Now let's get some arms in here. So let's go back to our, our IMM primitive. So that's B, I, and then T. And just so everyone knows too, I use the default, uh, the default, yes, speaking in. <laughs> I use the default UI. So if you're learning for the first time uh, and you're able to see everything I'm doing, you can easily replicate that. So I'm gonna grab an insert cylinder. And again, we wanna make sure that our symmetry is turned on. And I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to scale this out, and then I'm going to come back. And this is actually going to give me some skinnier arms. Cool. And we're going to do kind of a T-pose approach with him. Throw this around. And then with these exact same 
pegs, I'm actually going to go ahead and drag these out by control dragging. Scale these up a little bit because these will be the legs. There we go. Let's position that there. Just kind of finesse this a little bit. And I will be referencing, if I actually come to my reference down here, I actually have a standing the gecko. You might recognize them, but I have this for reference, so I want to make sure that I'm actually doing something very similar, but we're going to the salamander actual anatomy. So salamanders have some pretty cool legs. So I'm going to go ahead and drag these out. Just bend these. We're just looking for overall basic appeal. We're not going for anything too crazy. Now in this case, what I will do if I have too many of the same polygroup and I want to start isolating, I'll go to polygroups, auto groups, and then I go to geometry and then modified topology, mirror and welt. That's going to correct any of my, that's going to correct anything that might be not symmetrical. And then it's also going to give, uh, it's going to move over my polygroups from one to another. So. So now everything on this side is red, and then I can come back here, isolate this guy, control drag this out. Actually, let's let's drop his arms a little bit. Let's not go crazy with the with the T pose. Let's drag this out. I like to bend my arms a little bit. Control tap and then control W. Now I'm just gonna come up. I'm gonna hit control S, which is gonna save, which I had hotkeyed this guy right there. So now that will be perfect for that. And now let's go back to the move infinite. May I ask what would be the most efficient method of making roots on a wall? Maybe a typical curve tube, do you agree? That's a great, great question. And actually, I'll tell you right now, there's a couple approaches that I think you'll really, really like. So I'll actually grab, here, let's move this guy up. <clears throat> you know, let's move him up here so I don't have to keep moving him every five seconds. Um, let's actually grab a plain 3D and I'm just going to hit solo mode for a second. And then what I'll do is let's scale this up just a little bit. So a couple things that you could do for like some sort of, yeah, some sort of like curve tube, that would be a way I would start it. So I'd actually go grab like maybe a curve multi-tube or just your basic curve tube. Let's go with your basic curve tube. And then, yeah, as you start dragging this out, right, you'll get all this kind of snake approach. Um, if you ever get this error, by the way, you notice here how it didn't stick to the mesh. Um, Control Z, come up here to your timeline and double check to see if you have a timeline stamp that's red. If you do, just go ahead and Control Tap, make a new one, and then Control Tap, make an undo that. And that actually, that corrects that for you. So I would probably come here, make a curve tube, draw out my basic curve first. And then, yeah, I would go to Stroke, Maybe do 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 do. Yeah, curve modifiers. I would go to size, curve fall off, and then I would actually start playing with maybe the shape of this. Come through, maybe see something that's a little bit more interesting, and then I would retap that, giving me something cool like this. Once I have something like this, what I would ultimately start to do is I would actually clear this out. I would separate the two. So let's split hidden. I'm going to go ahead and just unhide and just keep my block out hidden for now. And then I would go with dynameshing this. So I would actually subdivide a couple times just so I have a little bit more control over the mesh. And then I go to dynamesh. I would use my resolution slider to click and drag and make sure that the resolution is good. Turn blur off and then dynamesh. And now what I would do is I would bring up the snake hook brush. So the snake hook, so B, S, and then I believe it's H. Doop, 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 doop. Yep, H. And then this little note just telling you that Sculptures Pro is your best friend with this brush, but you could just skip this note till restart if you want. And then what I would do is I would actually make my brush size, and as I drag this out, I'm gonna press Alt. So if I were to just drag this out normally, right, it may or may not stick with the underlining mesh that it sees. But what's really cool about this is that if I start holding Alt, it's going to snap to that actual mesh. So I can come through and redynamesh this, come through, hold Alt, and start manipulating this. And it's going to do its best to stick to the vertices that are underneath the mesh itself. And then redynamesh. If you want, use Sculptress. 
so then you don't have to keep redynamishing. But this is a great way to then get those kind of funky designs and shapes that will actually stick to the surface of it. And this works on a curved surface as well. Of course, you will be able to lift off the mesh if you desire, but I'm holding Alt, and you can see here it's really trying to stick with the mesh. Where if I don't hold Alt and I just start dragging, and I'm going to start here, I can pull off the underlining mesh. So just by holding Alt, it's going to stick to that underlining mesh as best as it can. And it's going to be really, really, really cool. So definitely, um, definitely to take blah, blah, definitely take that approach. And then of course you can redynamesh that at any point in time. So that would be really, really cool. So that's how I would end up doing that, especially if you're going for like that kind of Last of Us feel. And then if you really want to have fun, if you are going for a kind of Last of Us feel, we can expand on why you would want to do that. Um, we can actually go to some of the new snake curve brushes. So say something like this. And then you can actually start pulling out new shapes. This was introduced back in, oh, what was it, 2020, 2022, I think this was introduced then. Um, so you're actually able to really come through and make some new kind of fun designs. And if you hold Alt or Control, you can find that you actually might get some interesting features. But definitely a really fun way to make some roots and stuff. How do you manage working on a portfolio while studying college? That's a great question. As, as, a, as a professional, it gets really hard too. It's not just like, it's not just, you know, in school, you're, you, it's kind of the same aspect. In school or where you're working, either way, you're always working on something and a lot of us are tied to NBAs. So I always say, take an hour to yourself where you can and just work on something that's super fun, but you really want to showcase your skills as best you can. Timing is always kind of a thing that we're struggling with. As artists, we're trying to always make sure we have time for ourselves. And I know that could be very difficult. I found that to be very difficult, um, especially the busier I get, even working day in and day out. So the, the thing is, is that while you're studying for college, what I would do is take some time for yourself. The things that you've learned in school apply that to a personal project that you love that you have fun whether it be fan art whether it be you know sculpting your your partner whether it be you know making a ring or something for a loved one or just like making something goofy and sketching um just whatever it is try your best to have a personal project always and whatever you're learning apply those techniques to that personal project that's what i would recommend that's what i try to do as well um, because as artists, we're always going to be learning something new. I'm currently trying to learn Unreal Engine because I really want to take my stuff into a VR and AR, wor and AR world. And so it's really helpful to learn. But m I'm working like between eight hours a day minimum. And then I have kids. So I, I go home and I hang out with my kids. And then I try to have like me time and then I also have to try to have art time so those are things that like it's always a balance and it's easier said than done but I would definitely say try to invest with a, a project that's really really cool that you just absolutely love so hopefully that's helpful but that's what I would say nice could look like venom, veins of venom sculpt absolutely that's actually in one of the venom pieces I did that's exactly what I ended up doing <laughs> it's super fun okay 100% you are so, so welcome. And yeah, 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 we're more in A pose. I know I was saying T pose. It's more A pose. Yeah, you're absolutely right, 100%. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue forward. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my B, I, and then T for my primitives. I'm going to grab a little sphere here. We're going to drag this out. So I'm going to drag it out, and then I'm going to squish it like such. And then I'm going to set this in the center, and then I'm going to kind of expand this out. Now, if you get this... Whoop, 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 that this is happening. We can actually turn on local symmetry. And we can actually, and this is original local symmetry. With the new 2022, we actually do have dynamic symmetry, which goes to the gizmo location, which will allow me to keep truly symmetrical where the gizmo is at. But this actually doesn't work in this case because I want to actually uniformly keep him uh, symmetrical in world symmetry. So I'm going to turn off dynamic which will take me back to the local symmetry as we know it, and that will allow me to control this, uh, the mesh to the mesh itself. So now I can come back here, 
and I can start moving this and I could turn local symmetry back off because we are symmetrical and just give us a basic shape. And these hands are so, so adorable. So I'm going to do, a, oops, I don't want actually to have the sculptress mode on, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to invert that a little bit. I'm actually going to smooth down these arms and then kind of tuck them in a little bit. So we're just kind of going for something that I think would look pretty cool. And then this is the time in which you really could just look at how you are approaching the anatomy and little things about the anatomy that you know, like the elbow usually flares out a little bit, you know, so try to, you try to make those adjustments when you can, even in the basic block out stage. Let's use our normal move brush, which is B and N V. And this way you can get something that looks a little. Now this is pretty low mesh, so we're not too worried about the details, but that little flare out is a little mental note for me that his elbow needs to be in that position. It's not perfect anatomy by far. This is totally ugly, but we're working on it. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the gizmo. I'm going to tap here, and I'm going to just repurpose this guy. So control dag, move this over, move this down, reset this. And now we have his little feet, and we're going to go ahead and drag this here and get something. Now his feet are going to be covered in boots for the most part, so there's almost no need to sculpt his whole toes. We don't need to go full anatomy with him. We just need to get it close enough. So I'm actually going to let's make this a new poly group. Let's go with something different. There you go, yellow. Perfect like a greenish neon green. So I'm actually going to kind of make these a little bit more like they are uh, like they are boots. I think that would be much, much better. Let's move this here and I'll just kind of noodle this in place. And then let's actually angle that. And then let's use our clip curve. Actually, you know what? Let's use a knife brush. And there's a reason why I want to use a knife brush. So usually I would use a clip curve here in this instance because I want to make his feet kind of flat. So if I go to clip curve, right, and I come through, I go back, let's move this up. There we go, let's do that. Okay, so with clip curve, this would obviously squish the bottom of his feet, making that portion flat, which is fine for what we want. However, I'm gonna be zero meshing this at some point, and this actually might, this actually might cause me just a little bit of complication with the zero mesher being neat and clean. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the knife brush in this case. So I'm going to come up here, control shift, grab the knife brush, and where the shadow is facing is what is gonna cut, and I'm gonna make this cut. Now the reason why I'm calling this out is if you look at this mesh, the majority of this mesh is quads, and it gives me a new poly group. So this will be really important to isolate the poly group, come down here, I can actually stretch this portion out if I wanted to. And when I go to Z remesh it, I can actually have a little bit more of separation and more control on that poly group. What I can also do is let's say I want to add some edge loops here. I can mask out the edge loop and go to slice curve. Now I can add in a few custom edge loops to here to support that new mesh that I just stretched out. So that will actually do that where slice curve now that's a new way to introduce those edge loops slice curve would usually create a new poly group but when it's masked it just applies that edge loop so which is pretty really cool so i have one more right there perfect that is pretty cool okay so we got a really basic block out let's control s to save it uh, when i was in college i would take a pencil and some paper and just go for a walk it didn't matter where i would walk off and just draw whatever catches your eye. Anyway, that's how I would clear my mind. That was back in the early 90s, and I would still do it today whenever I feel I'm feeling stressed about uh, whatever I'm working on. Oh, dude, no, seriously, that's a great thing. Um, I've actually been using Forger, which is um, you know on the iPad. I've been using Forger to get away from behind the computer and just sit on a couch and veg out with a TV show that I like, or I'm hanging out with my kids, and I'll just start sculpting. Um, or I'll use like Procreate to do light sketches as well. So yeah, just being able to get up and out from the desk sometimes is helpful. And I like that you go on, cl on clear walks and 
that's always so helpful to do. So yeah, hundred percent recommend. It's also good too. I'm just going to say real talk for five seconds. It's also really good too, to as artists, we need experiences in our life because that inspires us when we're actually going through and creating our art. And I find that like the more I take time to go out and enjoy life, you know, it doesn't have to be every day, but you know, I'll go out and I'll hang out with some friends. I'll do something different or, you know, go for a walk to a park and just veg for a second. It's nice to know that like when I come back, I feel refreshed and I feel more motivated to create because now I could take those experiences. Um, again, watching Anna Carolina, she was doing, you know, uh, this really neat underwater scene and I have a bearded dragon. So when I watched her stream, I was like, oh, that's a cool lizard. Then I was looking at my bearded dragon a little bit different. I was like looking at his anatomy, took him out of his tank. And then, and then I found myself at the pet store, just kind of like, you know, getting food. But then I stared at like all the different types of lizards and found them super fascinating. And now I'm like, I have to sculpt one. So it's super important to have those as well. So I totally get with you, man. Totally relate. It's so awesome. We got We got to live. We got to live our life. So yeah, that's so cool, man. Thanks for sharing that. That's really awesome. Okay. So we're going to come back here and let's go through and I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And now let's get his little phalanges. His little fingers going and these fingers are so freaking cute guys this is crazy it's like so it looks like basically it looks like a more straightforward hand just four fingers it looks like three fingers and a thumb almost which is how i'm gonna approach it so because i'm gonna want him to hold something in this world that we're building which um you know that's gonna be something interesting so i want him to have a little bit of opposable thumb so what we're going to do, let's go back to our IMM blockout. And for this, I think I'm just going to use capsules, you know. So I'm actually going to draw out this little finger. I'm going to recenter this, and I'm going to go ahead and maybe scale this down. Let's turn on that local sim one more time. So again, we can do a nice uniform scale and stretch this out. go through oh Anna's your mentor awesome dude Anna's awesome Anna is awesome she's super awesome I've had the pleasure of working with her and it's super super cool so hey what's up Emperor Cheese I do have a bearded dragon yeah yeah uh, <laughs> I don't have him at work but I do have a bearded dragon he's old man he's old he's like he's like 12 years old almost um, that's awesome I, I love beardies uh, only bad thing is they the mess they leave behind after they go. Yeah, seriously, right? Yeah, she helps me with a lot of sculpting. I don't think I'd be able to switch um, career at this point in my life, but I'm still making sculpts and selling the files is fun. That is super awesome. Yes, having fun and and enjoying the the process of art, like I totally get it. Enjoy it. It's super cool. Okay, so I'm now going to control drag. I'm going to make these. Again, I'm going to make these phalanges come out. I'm not, again, I'm not worried about anything other than I'm just trying to get the basic shape and block out of these. And actually, let's come back here real fast. I'm going to stretch this out even further. Okay, now I'm going to do a control drag again, kind of rotate this around, place this in shape. And then I'm going to do that one more time. But now I'm going to actually scale this back down. And this will give me a very generic. Uh, approach to that. Now I'm going to isolate all of these. Okay, just move them for a second. And before we do any other like mirror and weld, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Z Modeler. I'm going to hover over an edge and we're going to get our own loops in here. So multi loops, key poly groups. I said key poly groups. Oh, I must have hit average normals. I must have hit the wrong one. That's okay. Drag this out and then I'm going to tap all these other ones to give them the exact same edge loops just like such. Now our mesh is there like that. And now we're gonna go to poly groups, auto groups, and then I'm gonna go to geometry, modify topology and mirror and weld with the local sim on. So let's turn that off. And there we go, that looks like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit control S to save that. Whoop, whoop, happy Wednesday, Ben. Welcome in, welcome in. Hello, sir. How to make good portfolio VFX for the game industry. That is a super great question. 
I love that question so much. So when you're trying to get into games or film, um, what you need to do is showcase, you need to showcase um, your wireframe and your maps. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. I used this on a animated project a couple years ago. And this is by all, by all no means, this is not like the, you have to do it this way. Please don't misunderstand that. This is just something that I recommend. Starting here is a really good step. First things first, if the project is able to be showcased, showcase that, so sh always showcase the final render of what it is. I sculpted this guy for um, coach.com like two years ago, which is really, really cool. And then you wanna show like a good render or turn, which is awesome. But more importantly, you wanna be able to showcase your wireframes, your maps. The maps are important when it comes to games and film. I stress this so much. So here I actually used uh, Marmoset tool bag and I'm able to quickly showcase the, you could see the wireframe of the low version. You could see that this creature had some gloss. You could see the albedo. Um, you could see the normals. Come back over here, normals. There we go, click on it. So you could see all this stuff, which is nice. You wanna be able to showcase that. And then the versions of the sculpt and then anything else that it was showing a also, too, I would recommend showing a breakdown of how the UVs are packed is always a great way. Showcasing that um, will help you as well. Showcases if your UVs are clean or not. And don't be afraid to show a sculpt non-color version of your model. Again, this is more of like, this is where I would start, but definitely look at um, some more high-end portfolios of people who are in games. Since I normally come from toys, uh, but I've done some animation work. I don't claim to be a professional in the in the games field because I do toys and now I teach ZBrush for a living. But I would say start there. That will get you really, really close to what you're looking at. The idea is that most, most um, uh, recruiters are going to only have a few seconds to look at your portfolio. So wow them. Give them a wow factor. Make them, make them see your work for what it is. That's going to be super important. So I would start there and then refine as needed. And if you get rejected by somebody, by the way, don't be afraid to ask them, hey, um, I noticed that um, I was turned down. Was there anything that I could do to improve upon my said work? And that alone is super helpful. Um, they may not give you any feedback, but if you can convince a recruiter to give you feedback, then go right ahead and do it. Um, so I, I would highly recommend starting there. What I'm doing right now is getting some shape language, by the way. Um, I want my creature to look really, really cool. I don't want, I don't like static T poses or A poses. They look boring to me. <laughs> so I'm actually coming through and giving a little bit of a nice kind of curve. And that S curve is always so cool to look at, especially when it comes to like body language. You want like a nice flowing shape so definitely refine, refine, refine. Let's actually move this here. Actually, here, let's, here's a really cool trick too. If you're gonna wanna grab like a certain type of mesh, so you actually select the majority of the mesh that you want, Control Shift A will isolate all of that. So for example, let's say I only wanted these two legs, select these two legs, Control Shift A only selects those legs of the poly group, it hides everything else. And now what I can do is I can actually push this forward a little bit. Right, so then let's say like I want these guys here, control shift A, and then I'll mask out and then I'll move this. Bada bing, bada boom, let's move this forward like such. Gives me just a little bit. And then same thing here, I want these guys, control shift A, mask them out, and then now let's get these arms in a more proper position because nobody's arms is coming out of their pecs like that. There we go, boom. Oh, thanks. Laters, TL101, good to see ya. Hey, Brad, Grote man, dude, what's happening, dude? Everybody say hi to Brad. <laughs> Brad, what's happening? Uh, okay, so did I miss a lot? No, you didn't miss a lot. We are just getting started. I've only been live for 40 minutes and we go until noon. We're just doing a character block out at the moment. And so these guys have little tentacles on their head. So let's get these little tentacle guys going on. So let's come through. And again, we're just gonna repeat this whole process. So here, I'm actually gonna choose 
how do I want to do this? I think, you know what, instead of redrawing out a shape, let's go ahead and isolate these fingers, specifically these right here. Control drag, because these are about the same shape. I'm gonna invert this, call this a new poly group, so then I don't have to worry about anything else. Mask off that rest, and now we're gonna come through here. And now let's, let's take a look. Do I have a shot? I only have a straight on shot. Where do these actually live? Let's actually blow this up for a second. Where do these live on their heads? I'd imagine more towards the back. Yes, looks like they're coming out the back of the head. So that's where we'll put it. We'll always refine later, maybe get a little bit more anatomy reference for that. But that's looking, that's going to be fairly decent. Now, talking about that inflate earlier, so I'm actually going to grab the mass lasso. I'm going to back up and do a soft selection. And now here, again, turn on that local symmetry. And then I'm actually going to blow this up a little bit, maybe stretch it out. Blow that up just a little bit. Cool. And now I'm going to soft select this guy here. Just softening by control tapping, and then I'm going to maybe stretch this out and then scale it down a little bit. And then do so now we have the move brush. I'm going to do a little soft, a little soft smooth. So I hold smooth, start smoothing, let go of, of hold shift, start smoothing, and then let go. And that will do a relaxed smooth. Just like that. Okay, now let's go ahead and Invert this, and now let's place this here in the back. Okay, and it looks like we have some that like kind of point up. And again, we're just gonna do something kind of interesting. We'll go drag this down. I'm gonna control tap. I'm going to control tap to swap, control W, right? And just keep my poly groups. I don't wanna mirror and weld it again do something like that maybe this one will get extended let's see or we'll make this one just a little bit bigger and then control drag that control tap give that a new poly group control shift drag maybe do something along those lines like that yeah like that as you said it's the same for big and small studios Yes, same for big and small studios, absolutely. What you might notice with smaller studios is you'll end up wearing a lot more hats. Um, you'll find that a lot of studios, um, uh, smaller studios, they'll have, uh, if you're more well-rounded, then you'll have a good chance of getting in like a more indie film because maybe they'll have you, you know, maybe like they'll have you do uh, texturing and sculpting because you know both. Whereas in a AAA studio, not all studios are the same, but a lot of them run similar. Like a AAA studio might have a texturing department and you're just a modeler. Um, AAA studios tend to have a little bit more of what I would call specialties um, artists where they only do that one thing and they're really, really good at it. And then they have teams that support that. So like I've, I've seen small studios where they have rigging artist and they are also the animator. And then I've seen big studios with a rigging department. They only rig the characters and then they push it off and then they have just animators to animate it. So every studio is different, but ultimately um, smaller studios, you'll just find that you'll typically wear more hats at the end of the day, which there's nothing wrong with that too, especially if you're trying to become more of a well-rounded artist, which doesn't hurt because my, my philosophy is if you understand a lot of the different jobs that are out there and you understand um, what it is that they are actually doing, you may not have to be an expert, but just understanding their position sometimes will take you a lot further because ultimately you'll at least know how to support the team members who are doing the different jobs. So it's always helpful just to become aware of it. Okay, let's move that finger. Okay, so right now, I feel like I have his arms that are still too high, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag this, Control Shift A, and then invert that, and then let's actually just kind of bring that down a little bit and refine 
that shoulder just a bit more. So we'll give him a little bit of a, give him a little bit more of uh, what I classify as a more stylized. It'll be a little bit more stylized. Okay. So let's actually turn off topological on this brush and I'm going to move his elbow down just like such. There we go. And then again, I like to have a little bit of expression in my, in my poses, especially with their A pose or T pose. So what I'm going to do is alt tap and then I'm going to kind of put his hands down a little bit. Now he's like this, checks out, works out pretty well. Cool, all right. This is pretty basic block out, but I think we're getting to a spot. Let's actually refine his head just a little bit. So let's get something there. And then let's actually maybe grab and create more of a jawline. I like to stay as low as possible in these early stages because it's going to really, really help refine and, and bring that character to life. If you can get this character looking most of the way you uh, most of the way so he's visually representing like the silhouette is looking good and the character is coming to life but it's still super low topology then you're already at a great start because the fact that once you start detailing if the foundation doesn't look good then your detailing is not going to look good because then you're just kind of covering up and you can never fix a model that just isn't isn't correct so take the time to really get the low looking good um, don't feel a need to rush through it there's no race to the finish line even if there's a deadline you know take an extra five minutes to just check things before you move on it's super helpful there we go so let's actually push this like that great Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a couple things. So especially with stylization, I like to add a couple extra little things. And here I'm going to add a sphere for an elbow and a knee. So I'm going to drag this out. And of course, I want to make sure symmetry is turned on. Oh, I have local sim turned on. Let's turn local sim off. Turn symmetry back on. There we go. That's always helpful. Now I'm going to squish this like such, and I'm gonna position this, maybe scale this down just a little bit. Again, let's turn local sim back on. And this is just gonna be a little notation for where that uh, elbow is. And now I'm gonna control drag, invert that, control W, give it a new poly group, mask that out. And now I'm gonna put this on his knees. And this will give me his knee positioning at this point. Let's reshape that. Just saw the updates to your Enox sculpt. Are you also uh, intending on printing that? The skin looks great. Absolutely, I am, Ben. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And if you guys want to know what he's talking about, if you have not seen it, uh, let me see here real quick. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ooh, you know what? Actually, I think I can bring it up. I think I sent it to myself here. I was working on a personal project, uh, the where I'm a huge Zelda fan. I cannot wait for the next Zelda. <laughs> so hopefully you guys are also super excited for that. If not, it's all good, no worries. I just love Zelda. Um, where is my own thread? Where are we at? Where are we at? There we go, send stuff to myself. Wrong channel, send stuff to myself. So this is, this is actually what Ben's talking about. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I actually ended up working on this um, over the weekend and really pushed it. So it was so cool. Really dug how this came out. I used, I reused a couple assets. So if you've seen my stone talisman um, or stone talus from The Legend of Zelda with a couple of goblins on the top, because I saw the first sneak preview of Breath of the Wild 2, and it looked like they had goblins on a stone talus which is insane. It's like a stone talus fortress now. Um, so I built that like a year ago, and then now I repurposed some of the weapons I made, brought them in, but then I uh, ended up texturing this in Substance Painter. Um, but everything was uh, sculpted in ZBrush, and then I UV'd it um, with uh, the GoZ method into uh, Cinema 4D and did the auto unwrap, then brought it back and sent it over. It was a really good way to just get some quick UVs. I also decimated this with keep uvs 
so that I was working on a relatively low mesh but had all the high details because I didn't want to I didn't want to personally I was being lazy and I didn't want to just I wasn't going to animate him so it didn't matter <laughs> you know what I mean like he wasn't going to he wasn't going to be animated he was just a statue but I wanted all the sculptural details to be on there but I wanted to paint him in substance and uh, yeah, he came out great so I made the low poly so basically yeah actually real quick I don't have do I have an example I can do? Let me save this real quick here. And let me see what models I might have that I can kind of showcase that a little bit. Let me see what I have. Maybe I can give you an example on my Santa Cruz hand. Yeah, let me let me let me pull that Santa Cruz hand up real quick. And I can I can showcase uh, a process that I did. So we'll just take this this hand, guys. So let's actually grab this, this mesh here. So what I did was I actually, so now there's a couple things you can do in ZBrush, which is really, really cool. You can now actually use creases in 2023 to um, split your UVs. So in this case, what, um, what you could do if you wanted to do that was go to your low topology. You could go crease, crease by Paul Gabriel's, and then you can go to your UV. And if you if your thing doesn't have UVs, like whoops, doesn't have UVs, you can go to create unwrap, and it's not symmetry, it's a turn off symmetry, and you can unwrap via crease edges. And you don't have to clear out your subdivisions. You just have to go on your lowest subdivision for that. And then if I were to morph this, now you can see that I have some. Eh, UVs. You have to. You can actually go through as well. Like let's say if you wanted to refine this, you can go to your Z modeler, hover over a, a actual uh, point. So come over here over vertice, and then what you can do is you can do 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 crease by shortest path, and then I can actually start clicking points, and actually dragging out my different seams, and I can get exactly what I want when I want it and it will do a good job and I can split it that way. That's one way you can do it. Um, the other way you can do it, especially if you have access to max on one, so I'm gonna uh, uncrease all. What you can do is, and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and subdivide it back up to a relatively decent size. I'll just delete, let's actually just do delete that one so it's not too crazy. So what you could do now is I can go Z just what is currently visible. So if I hit go Z, It'll go through and go Z will just find the single mesh and then it'll populate Cinema 4D. Of course, you'll just have to make sure that you have that that um, that uh, go Z set up for that, which is really simple to do. But once it opens up, now my mesh is here and it's the low version of this. So here, let's come over here real quick. Boop, boop, boop move that salamander guy out of the way. So now I have this guy right here. I'm actually gonna close this real fast and go up to the UV edit. So now here, yeah, it does have UVs because we had UVs on our mesh, but what I can do is I can actually come down here to UV manager, automatic UV, if you just need some UVs but you don't really wanna cl clean them up too much, and I can just go ahead and apply this, and then that's gonna take a second, and it's gonna cut up my hand, and it's gonna do it as best as it thinks. And then of course you have other options like packed, cubic, or angle, that's fine. And then you can do auto packing real fast to get something neat. And then you can just send this back. Literally we're in here for two seconds. Go to extension, come back to Z exporter, and I'll send that back into ZBrush. And now if we go ahead and take a look at our mesh here. So if I go down to UV, right, and I morph this, there you go, there's my UV, boom. So now what I can do with this is I can actually, this is how I did it. So I went ahead and um, I deleted the lower subdivision and I kept the UVs and then I went to Z plugin. I went to decimation master, keep UVs. You can keep and use polypaint if you want, which I did on that Henox. I kept in UVs and then I just chose a custom Say something small, like this is actually 763, that's not too bad. So we can actually do something like 20,000. 20, uh, that might be too low. Let's go 150,000 just for 
for funsies. So we'll let that decimate real fast. That might take a second, but it'll go through and it'll keep those UVs for me. And then I can use this sculpted mesh and I can send this via FBX on over to Substance Painter. And that's how I would move this mesh into that mesh. And those, this would just be strictly a, I have a statue and I wanna actually texture it and it was too high. So now here, but if you notice, I have my Morph UV is still active, right? But this would just be a nice low mesh to work on. And then I would export this out as, um, as my, my low mesh. And then I would just bake this on itself in Substance, which you can do very easily. So that's how I ended up doing it. And again, just come up here to export. And then under this, find out where you want to export it out. And then you would just say, pick FBX and then do your export there. So that's, that's the down and dirty way of doing it. And that's actually how I did this Henox character, which he ended up looking really, really, really good. So super excited about that. Although I need to, for this, I had a lot of subtools and I was being very lazy <laughs> and I didn't like merge like subtools. So this was a fun project to realize that like I did more work than necessary. Do, do, do. I'll have to bug you sometime a bit on the skin tailing when you're not streaming. Absolutely, absolutely, man. All right, let's go back to our fun little character because I at least want to get a good chunk of this uh, welded together, which we're almost there. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I'm not missing any questions either. Hey, do you think I can apply to different jobs like environment, 3D artists, even though I'm doing props or would they really want to see specific portfolio? Yeah, if you're going for a specific portfolio, I would highly recommend that you have your portfolio to the job you're applying for. Um, because yeah, if you're trying to get a, an, an environmental, an environment, ugh, I can't speak, an environmental 3D artist job, um, they're going to want to see that in their portfolio. Absolutely. But what you could do is that if you know how to do um, work like that, like if you are somebody who does dabble with environments, you could create a different portfolio. So you could have a, a an art station is not sponsored in any way, shape or form, but art station does allow you to have different sections. So you could have, for example, let me just go back to mine real fast so you can see it. Um, just so you can see it, but here, if I go to my art station, you notice here I have 3D printed models, and then I have game ready, game or animation ready models. There's only the one in there, and then I have everything. You can section it off. So what you could do is when you apply, if you have like a bunch of environments that you worked on, you have an environment tab. So when they get to your portfolio, they're like, oh, he has an environment tab, great. Oh, he has a game character tab, perfect. Like here, here's everything I 3D printed that I'm showcasing. Actually, I need to add more to this because I had now have 3D printed him and I want to 3D print him. I have 3D printed that one and he's not there yet. So I need to do that. But nonetheless, you can uh, organize your, you can organize this to match. So definitely do that. And then you can say like, oh, hey, I'm applying and my portfolio has environment pieces and therefore you could just go in there and showcase that. Boop. So you again, you definitely want to make sure that you have a portfolio that matches the job that you are you are applying to. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and position this knee guy a little bit. There we go. Boop 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 boop. -boo. Okay, so this is pretty 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 simple. Let's uh, start refining this character a bit because. Again, I'm not going to go into full anatomy with him because we're going to be covering up in a spacesuit. But I haven't decided if I want a baggy spacesuit or if I want um, some sort of, you know, uh, skin tight spacesuit. Um, still working that out. So what I'm going to do is get the generic anatomy in place. So I'll get his thighs looking relatively thigh ish. I'll get his calves looking relatively like a calf would look and his shins and stuff like that so kind of making sure that um, I'm actually gonna move to move infinite so making sure that it looks kind of how it should look relatively so just kind of get a little something you don't want it to be too too crazy but let's get something like that okay it's looking that's looking pretty decent now here, I don't really, 
Uh, I don't think I need to add much of a shoulder definition as like another model, but I will pull out um, where his shoulder would meet if with a clavicle. Again, kind of pulling this out here. I need to make sure I'm not moving too much. There we go. Let's give him a little bit more of a belly. Perfect. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some eyes. I can do this one of two ways. I can actually either just drag out the eyes like I normally would. So you'd see here I'd have some eyes. Boom. Eyes. Boom. Done. Right? But what I'm actually going to do is go up to um, macro. And Zebra ships with some macros. And one of the things that they do ship with is append eyes. And here we go, got some basic eyes. Perfect. And now what I can do is I can place these. These append eyes not only have like some decent color on them, but they also have poles. So I can position the pole as such. So his eyes would be pointing out. And they're already black, which is a really good base color to start with. So let's actually bring these in here. Perfect. And his eyes, these are a little bit, now we're, we're making some stylized choices, but for now in the block out, I'm actually going to kind of make sure that this looks relatively proportionate to what I'm seeing here. So, and now I can come back to this guy, come to move. Let's isolate the head just a little bit. Let's make some adjustments here. Now here's the thing, uh, I'm definitely not the fastest sculptor in the world, but I like to, again, I like to look at everything and take my time and make sure that it's turning out the way I'm liking it. So I'm actually making some very purposeful decisions here. And I'm actually gonna take the pinch brush. I'm gonna pinch this little area and refine his, his jaw and his lower lip just a bit. Maybe do just a little bit of a relaxed smooth on that mesh. There we go. Looking something like that. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and save it. Best advice you ever received was don't 3D model or do something that someone else has done. Do not put it on a portfolio, but make it your own if they wanted to hire them. Uh, him or her, not showcase your talent, but best work advice I've ever received. Hey, what's up, Leonard? How you doing? Hold on, I need to re I, re I need to reread that. Luck, sorry. Uh, best work advice I've ever received. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like it. It really depends on the portfolio that you're going for. Um, Everyone looks for something a little bit different, but I, I would say like for me, my portfolio, like I came from when I started working at, before I worked at Maxon, I was working at Funko. Before I worked at Funko, I was definitely working um, freelance and doing uh, odd jobs and working for companies like coach.com. Um, so those are those are definitely the, the kind of ebb and flow that I did. What I always found was I always found that the projects that I did the best on were the projects I was super passionate about. So I would definitely say, yeah, you know, focus on things that are definitely things that you are super passionate about that you love. Um, I have fan art in my portfolio. The idea is like, what are you trying to showcase? What are you telling me? If you're a toy sculptor, I want to know you're a toy sculptor. I want to know that you made a toy and I want to know that there was a concept and I want to know that you were able to follow that concept and it's manufacturable. So did you 3D print it? Does it look good? What are your key cuts like? Those are things that are super important to me as a toy sculptor. So. As long as you showcase that stuff, you have a leg up on a lot of portfolios. If you just show a portfolio where it's like, here's a sculpt, done, it's like, it, that tells me nothing. You could be the world's best sculptor, but unless you actually have something that shows me what it was, then I, I, I have nothing to read. If there's no wireframe, there's no print, there's no key cuts, there's no maps, there's no, you know, there's no pipeline process to showcase, you're not really telling me anything other than you could model. And even then, I don't know if you were the one who actually modeled it because the only thing I see is the model. So whatever you're trying to achieve, I would definitely say, make sure that you're telling me the story of what you're trying to go for. So if you're going for environment, I definitely want to see environments and I want to see the texturing process. I want to see 
you know, how it looks, what's the, what's the, uh, does, how does it fit in Unreal Engine? Those little things are always going to matter. Um, again, everybody is a little bit different with what they look for in a, in a portfolio, and you never really can tell, but I always find best rule of thumb is to make sure that you are at least showcasing what you're going for in it so that it's clear and concise, and that's always a, that's always, um, a point of contention for me when I'm looking at portfolios, so... Um, tell me who you are, what you're about. Yeah. Do, do, do. For ZBrush, would I suggest 16 core CPU or 12 core? Because I'm not sure whether. Uh, so, so ZBrush functions, um, it's CPU driven with RAM and back support. So you want to have a really good CPU. So go with the best CPU that you can go for, but you definitely need RAM too. So um, I would say, for example, this machine I'm on currently, I'm on a Threadripper. So that alone is going to give me some really good results. And then I have uh, 128 gigs of RAM. On my personal machine, like my own personal machine, I'm running a Ryzen 5 with 48 gigs of RAM, and that is plenty. And the Ryzen 5 is, is not like a super grand CPU but it's good enough. But yeah, um, for the most part, we're, ZBrush is CPU and RAM based for sure. So I'm actually doing um, a stylized take on a little C Salamander character. And now we're actually getting ready to merge things together and then clean some stuff up. So this is actually what's really, really cool is now we're gonna start processing, at least getting the body and stuff looking fairly decent. Um, actually, real quick before I do that, let's let's do a small adjustment with these legs. So I'm actually going to grab this, Control Shift, mask this off. I'm actually going to make his legs a little bit wider because they feel too narrow to me. Feel really, really narrow. And then I'm going to invert this just a little bit. Now, when merging things together, this is really like this is preference for me. Everybody does things just a little bit differently, but for the most part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off. I'm going to keep the block out the way I want it. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to repurpose other parts of this block out. And if for some reason I merge things together and I find out that later I want to make some changes and it's easier to pull the, the block out apart, then I'll always have a backup. The only time I get rid of said backup is when I've completely decided that this is the way. Let's clear that, come through, mask that off. There we go. Um, again, his arms feel a little bit, still kind of finding the proportions a bit. I'm trying to think. Let's see, do I pull his arms back a little bit more? Maybe refine his back a bit more? Again, just taking that extra moment to kind of figure out what looks good. Give him a little bit more of like what would be a spine in this case, because he's going to be carrying a backpack. He needs a back. So that's looking pretty good. Let's actually draw some pecs on him real fast. And the reason why I want to do that is because I just want to see if this makes any sense whatsoever. And let me see real fast. Salamanders have some pretty thick necks. Like, their necks are just about as big as their head. So before I commit, and also to his body's a little tapered, so maybe that's what I'm sensing here is that this is just a little, this is just a little too narrow for what we're going for. Nope, I don't want to do that. So let's come back here. So again, just cleaning this up a little bit, maybe Maybe make him a little bit skinnier in this area, but a little bit wider. Cool. Okay. Decisions, decisions. This is always a fun part. Let's actually hide this. Mess that part out. Let's take a look. Does this look? Let's see here. We got this guy here. So let's let's take a look at the silhouette and let's take a look at the turn real fast. So it feels a little weird in the back but I might be able to correct that once things are merged and adjusted. So let's go ahead and just start doing that. That should be fine. We're ready to move on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save next. So now I can carefully tear this apart 
But like I said, I usually do a control shift D duplicate and then I hide this and I rename this and I call this block out. And then what I'm gonna do is now I'm going to separate things into pieces that I want. So for the first part, I'm actually going to turn this guy on here and let's actually grab this. I'm going to select just this portion, everything else. I just want his head and ears and I'm actually going to Oh, you know what? Not that way. Not that way. Let's do this. Let's grab select rec. Let's isolate these here. Come here, and I'm going to go ahead and split hidden. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick these two like this, and then I'm going to control F. With this pizza box selection, it's going to say, you know, I'll, do you want to group these with control F? And I'm going to say, yep, I'm going to call this the head. And now that's going to be grouped in that way. And now I have this here. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to remove the hands. I'm going to split the hands off. Okay. And then I'm going to call this hands. So rename this hands. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to, should I leave that? Should I leave it? Yeah, you know what? That's fine. Let's do that. Let's merge this together. So I'm going to solo this out. Explode. Solo this out. And let's do let's do a little bit of a merge and then clean up and then kind of finalize this a bit. So we can merge this a few different ways. You can merge this with either Dynamesh or you can actually end up merging this with Sculptures Pro. Dynamesh is pretty simple. So again, if you want to come through, you can actually just come through here, say Dynamesh, and then that's going to weld it all together. But I don't really want to do that, uh, not for this character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using Sculptures Pro in conjunction with a Z Remesher, Z Remesh by Union. So I'm going to turn on the gizmo. I'm going to open up this cog wheel, and I'm going to say Remesh by Union. And now this is going to merge things together. Now you'll notice that when we do this, you'll see that we have some triangles trying to merge this mesh together. So I'm going to help this out by hitting the, dub, uh, the Q to close down the gizmo. I'm gonna turn on maybe like, let's just call it like my clay buildup with an alpha six. And then I'm gonna make sure that symmetry is turned on. And then I'm gonna turn on Sculptress Pro. And we have some options with Sculptress Pro. So I'm gonna open up the stroke menu, Sculptress Pro. I'm going to turn off adapt to size and then maybe adjust the size that I'm working with. Maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, that should be good. And now I'm going to come through and actually start connecting these with Sculptures Pro. Just like such. So now what's this going to do is this is going to weld this together a little bit more, give it some more density. Then I'm going to Z remesh. And that zebra mesh is actually going to help me get a nice cleaner topology. So let's come through, something like that, which is really good. Now let's come down here. Again, he's going to be in a space suit. So ultimately, I don't mind merging. Uh, I don't mind actually merging everything here together because the suit's going to be pretty much all one piece, at least how I'm thinking about modeling it. So, and I can actually turn down the intensity of the brush itself. So we are doing some sculpting. There we go. Let's see. There we go. Do, 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 do. So again, this is a nice, this is a little bit more of a controlled method as well. <laughs> So I do like this, so we're going to come through here like that. Not worried about that bottom piece. If I turn off the wireframe, I can kind of see where my mesh looks and how it looks and clean that up just a little bit. So we are using Sculptress. Now I broke the hands off on purpose because I want to give the hands proper attention. And I find that when I weld my hands to my body, um, when I do a Z mesh, the hands usually get just a little bit uh, less topology than the rest of the body. So cutting out the hands tends to be a little bit helpful in that regards. All right, so we got this like that. I'm going to go ahead and turn off Sculptress because I don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to go ahead, close down Stroke. 
I'm going to go to Geometry Zero Mesh. There we go. And then I'm going to pick something that's decent. Eh, maybe I want his body to be like 20,000 points. That's not a whole lot, but that should be fairly decent. I will... Do I want to keep groups? Actually, you know what? Let me do this. Before we do that, I want to actually create some poly groups that I can control. So I'm actually going to mask off a section and do a little bit of a different approach. So I'm going to grab this guy here like such. I'm going to go ahead, sharpen that. Give me some different groups just like such. Don't want that mass there. There we go. Yeah, something like that. And maybe on the tail as well. We sharpen that. Give me just a little bit here. Okay. Those will be a little bit more controllable groups. So let's keep groups. Zero groups off. And then I'm going to go ahead and just say zero mesh. And we're not going to be projecting any detail because there's no detail to project. Let's see, um, should I model on ZBrush or Blender or some other software? Model where you need to, like ZBrush is still, to this day, ZBrush is the standard for digital sculpting because it is the one program out there that actually has the most high fidelity sculpting. If you're wanting to specialize in sculpting, ZBrush is a really great and one of the best programs out there on the planet. If you're just learning anything that you can learn, we do have ZBrush Core Mini, which is a free version of it. We also do have ZBrush Core, which is also a uh, more stripped down, streamlined version of ZBrush. So you do have options. ZBrush Core Mini is free and you could definitely download that and give it a shot. Uh, there's also a 14 day trial if you would like to give it a shot as well. But you know, if you're starting out, you know, try, try software that you enjoy, that you wanna play with. Doop, doop, doop. Whenever I can afford all the, <laughs> uh, whatever you can afford, they all have their own learning language. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Perfect, perfect, great, wonderful. Okay, so now we have this mesh here. Now this mesh is still a little, little funky, so let's get it down just a little bit lower. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go to deformation, I'm gonna go to polish by groups, and I'm gonna do an aggressive polish by groups. Okay, and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna zero mesh again. And actually before I do a zero mesh, I could probably tell you that there's a little bit of holes and stuff here. And so I don't want that. So I wanna make sure that there's not, so I can go down to mesh integrity, check, and look at that, yeah. Based on the mesh, I can already tell you that there was some errors. So it had two faces with multiple references, which is just not good, and six edges that are like all over the place. So let's go ahead and fix that. We can even go to modify topology, weld point, and close holes. And then weld points one more time just to make sure it's all good. And then we can go to zero mesher. And then maybe let's actually try like 10 and then let's go through it. Oh, that is much better. And that's looking a lot cleaner. So let's actually see how low can we go. Let's go half. So I'm actually gonna go to here, say remesh. We can do a little relaxed smooth. There we go, a little bit of a relaxed smooth. All right, and that is some halfway decent mesh that we can work off of just from zebra mesher. We have some nice quads, some decent poles. We have some straight quads coming down his body, a couple poles by his shoulder points, which is no big deal. If I relax, smooth this a little bit more by his tail. Okay, we probably actually cleaned that up a little bit here. It actually would, how do I wanna do that? Yeah, you know what, actually let's do that. So let's go ahead and save this, I do like this. And now I'm gonna take my Z modeler and we can actually fix a couple of these points um, to maybe generate just a better loop overall. So let's see if we can rebuild this. So if I come through here on face, there's actually a retopo brush in ZBrush, for those of you who didn't know, if we go up to our light box by hitting the comma, and then we go to brush, and then we go to, where are we? Z modeler, double click it. There is a Z modeler topological brush. And if we click that, what that did was it puts extrude on the edge points, it puts nothing on the faces, and on the actual vertices, it's move and snap to surface. And same thing with the edge, it's a snap to surface. And so we can now 
come through here and let's see if we can actually uh, maybe come through and just rebuild these. So if we if I come here on the face, I'm actually going to take change the face to do nothing to delete because I do want to delete these loops. And then let's actually take this point here, come through, trying to see what the best approach is to clean that up because I do have an extra loop that maybe maybe I just don't need that extra loop. We'll see. So I'm going to come here. Let's go, let's actually, instead of extrude, let's go to bridge, edges. So I'll click this edge and this edge. That will loop that. And I can see now why that did what it did. Now I'm just kind of curious if I actually come here to this point and I say insert, what happens if I delete that? That gives me a triangle, okay. There's a spiral there. Is it worth cleaning up? Is it worth doing it? Let's see here. If I come through there, and if I come through, a little bit of a troubleshooting. I'm trying to see if I actually have a good mesh to work with. This should be fine enough to sculpt on. Yeah, you know what? It might be more worth, more trouble than it's worth at this point to deal with that. I can always, I can always clean that up later. I don't see that giving me too many issues. Let's work with that. It's also just boring cleaning that up, so let's not let's not focus on that. Okay. Now let's come through, and now let's actually merge his head tentacles together. And we're going to do that very much in the same way we just did it here. Where can you learn ZBrush? Like any course? Absolutely. Okay. Well, we were definitely definitely getting to that point, but here you go. We actually have a free free. 27 I think it's a 27 part series and it's they're not long videos they're like five six minutes max and I will drop it right now so if you go to maxon.net and you go to learn and you go to Cineversity we have a bunch of resources here that are just accessible creating an account at maxon is super free too but you just these are free so don't even worry and this is the easiest way 27 videos with our very own anna carolina she came on she helped us out she created this whole series for us super awesome so i'm going to drop this right now in the chat you can go and take this and you can just start learning uh yes stevie's i am taking questions so feel free um, to ask my streams are every wednesday from 10 to noon um, unless we have special events but you can always ask questions while I'm modeling in these uh, in these streams. So go ahead and check that out, absolutely. And if you have any questions based on this series, please feel free to ask, and I'll definitely be able to help you out. All right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same approach for the head. So what we're going to do is just going to merge this together. So let's come through here, just moving that out the way. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this gizmo. I'm going to send this right here in the center. This mesh is already really, really cool. What's neat about this too, before I go too much further, something to note is that when you are merging things together that are quadded like this, pardon me, when things are quadded like this together, it's really helpful to make sure that um, there's good intersections and that the quads aren't too different from each other. Like if you have a really big quad and then tiny, tiny quads intersecting that, ZBrush is gonna have a harder time merging the big quad to the little quads. So if you're ever in doubt, like I don't really know if these are gonna be, if this is gonna work well, what you can do is just go to ZBrushure, hit same, and then just ZBrush it real fast. And that will give you very similar quads to each other. In this case, this is actually, one of those points where it's like, ah, this might be just a little bit. So Z remeshing that gives me something that's a lot similar to what I need. And now I can actually like modify this just a little bit. And now I believe I have meshes that is gonna be a lot better. So now I can come through, turn off symmetry for this. All right, come back here to remesh by union. And again, that's gonna help connect things a lot better. Hit Q, turn symmetry back on. You want to turn symmetry off when you're doing that because it doesn't work as well, um, if at all, actually. I don't know. Let me just double check that real fast just to make sure. If I have symmetry turned on, symmetry is turned on. I see remesh by union. It will work 
yeah, it'll work. If your model's truly symmetrical, that'll be okay. I turn it off, it's habit. I find that I just get a better result that way. But there you go. So, come through here, some true stand. Yep, perfect. Okay, it just it just kicks you out. Of, actually, it just kicks you out of symmetry. That's good to know. Nice little update. All right, so now we're gonna come through, turn off the queue, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a my clay buildup brush. Now here's a really cool trick when welding stuff together with Sculptress Pro, and this works in ZBrush Core Mini. It's my little hack with ZBrush Core Mini, is that you actually just turn the intensity down to zero, and what that will do is that will still apply your Sculptress Pro resolution, but I'm actually not building the mesh up at all because there's no there's no clay actually being applied. The intensity is at zero, but you have uh, you have uh, Sculptress Pro still doing what it needs to do. This also works with a smooth brush. So if you find yourself wanting to actually come through here and just merge things together, but not sculpt on top of it or uh, change the mesh in any way, shape, or form, then this is a great way to go about doing that because you're just making sure that now you've connected everything really, really well. And any time that there's like a weird triangle, that's where I'm actually applying that Sculptress Pro because it'll give it a nice clean mesh. And then now from here, with these polygroups, these are actually pretty clean polygroups. So now we'll go ahead and we'll say, we'll turn symmetry back, all right, perfect. And then let's go ahead. And actually I would say it's 40,000. So I'm gonna go with 20,000. I don't think we need it super high. Can you export your Redshift materials from Cinema 4D into ZBrush? No, not at this time. The reason why is because Cinema 4D uses a node-based system and ZBrush does not have a node-based system, so you won't be able to. However, the, the way you've built the, the materials within Cinema 4D, the, a lot of the sliders are worded and they respond in the exact same way as they would because you're, you're dealing with a Redshift renderer. So, if you're setting stuff up in Cinema 4D and Redshift and you know that you have, you know, like a roughness of 75 for a specific skin tone and that your subsurface scatter is calling a certain color, you can do that exact same method in ZBrush. But right now, no, they are not cross compatible at this time. But great question, by the way. Devil start with Michael Palpovich. Michael Palpovich is <laughs> Devil start with Michael Palpovich. Yeah, Michael Palpovich is, is is amazing, and yeah, he'll teach you a lot as well for sure. All right, so here we go. So we see now we have these these uh, points. They're connected, but not every not all the mesh is super clean. So come through here again. Deformation. Uh, polished by groups. We're going to turn that little dot off. That dot is just another algorithm that ZBrushes use to go ahead and make sure that you're getting a clean mesh. I'm going to polish that. That's a bit much. That's a bit aggressive. Let's turn that back on. And what I'm just looking for is that my, my uh, groups are nice and smooth. And then I'm going to come through here, geometry, and then I'm going to zebra mesh with the same at that point. And that will now give me some really good loops. So this way we have something that's decent that we can actually call on and utilize. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and actually smooth these up a little bit more, giving them a little bit different. And now we have some low poly mesh that is super sculptable. If we wanna actually kick that down even lower, we can just half that and get something that looks pretty decent. So, and now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the hands, but let's shape the hands a little bit different. Uh, I wanna make sure that we at least get the majority of our character built before we leave today. That's the goal. I will be working on this character off screen, but this is like a great way to like come build a character from scratch. And this way, uh, hopefully this has been helpful for everyone because we're gonna be doing a lot more like this. So coming through, I'm actually gonna come through this point here, rotate this finger a little bit. Awesome, awesome. Now what, I'm, what I will do is I'm going to create some points here where I'm going to actually give him points of contact for his finger, like such, there we go. Make sure that those loops look really, really good. Same thing here, I'm gonna come through, wrong one, I'm gonna mask this section off like that. Make sure that those look good. Another thing to remember when you're doing zebra mesh is that if you have 
If you have polygroups that are contrastly close to each other, meaning like this purple one here is pretty close to this, sometimes you'll get similar colors, but the hue is slightly different. This actually could cause zero measure to just kind of like maybe not distinguish the difference between this polygroup and this polygroup. So I always make it a habit to get like super contrasty polygroups next to each other so that when I go to zero mesh and I say keep polygroups, zero mesher is like, yeah, I know what you're trying to do. And, and then that works out. So definitely a really good uh, approach to that. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna round this hand a little bit. So I'm going to hit W and then hit the transpose tool by hitting Y. And then I'm gonna press and hold Alt and kind of round this hand just a little bit, kind of bend it. And then let's actually come through here. And now you can see that there's a little bit of roundness to his hand. So at this point now, what I'm gonna do is isolate these guys here Mask this off, hit W again, or I'm sorry, hit Y again. And now we can come through here and we can actually position this. Again, I kind of like to make the fingers just have a little bit of a pose to them. Come through, grab these guys, mask that off. Beautiful. No, no, there's no such thing as a dumb question. The only question that uh, would be dumb is the one you did not ask. There's no dumb question. Do we have a limited installations of ZBrush on any device or can you install and uninstall wherever you want? So you can uninstall and install it on as many machines as you would like. However, there is a limitation to how many can be active at one time. So ZBrush has, uh, uh, Maxon has a single license that can be transferred. So if you go to log in. So if let's say you're on one computer and you go to log in and then you go to another computer and it's not letting you log in. All you need to do is come on up here and you can actually come through to your account settings and you can release and re-engage that computer. So it is, it is one active at one time, but you can install it on other machines. I know an artist who has, I have them on too. I know a few friends have them on too. So you can go through and actually just say, you know what, I want to activate this machine at this time. Um, so through the Maxon app, you'd be able to go ahead and do that. So just come in here. And if you have any questions on that too, um, I believe, uh, do, 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 you should be able to, just that should be it. You could also probably just hit this refresh button. That should help you out. But I would come through here and just release your, uh, your license and then that will be active. Trying to zero mesh a hard surface uh, object, but I keep getting rounded angles and soft edges. How do I prevent that? Great question. Let me finish this one thought and then I will answer that question. There are a couple approaches you'll want to take. Boop. And of course it is going to be dependent on the shape for sure. But here real quick. Okay, we have this guy. We, we have this guy. Okay, I'm going to hit control save and then let's go ahead and Let's just pop open. I'm going to do a, um, a, a cube at this point just to keep things a little bit simple. OK, I'm going to scale this up. There we go. Now, when you're doing hard surface, polygroup is going to be your best friend. That's the approach I would take. Um, so what I would do, depending on your, on your hard edges or what your model looks like, is going to your results will kind of vary. But if you can do this approach, this is the approach I recommend. But then I could show you like one or two other ways of going about doing it. So first things first, if you can actually group by normals and get clear, clean polygroups, something like this, right? And let's say we had this at like a Dynamesh state. So let's see, what is this resolution? It's really ridiculous. Ooh, that is way too much. What are you doing, Ian? It's gonna come through here like this, if it's zero and hit Dynamesh real fast. So if you had something like this where your groups, you're in, you're working with Dynamesh, but you have some nice clean groups, then the approach I would take is zero measure, turn on keep groups and drop that down to zero. When you have smooth groups turned on, which is on by default and keep groups allows you to adjust this, smooth groups actually shrinks your mesh just a little bit, giving you soft rounded corners. And when you subdivide, 
unless you have a creased edge, you will also get a little bit of rounding. And depending on the way your edge loops are flowing will depend on how much rounding that actually happens. So if you're working with like Dynamesh, keep groups and even coming on and saying crease your poly groups and then you do a Z remesh. So let's actually do a Z remesh of five. With adapt, maybe try turning adapt size down just a little bit and then hitting Z remesh with heap groups with smooth groups turned off, you'll actually get a pretty decent result. Now, I'm actually going through and probably, this is a really high Dynamesh. Let's see what we get. Now, if you're working with a knife brush, which is another way you could do stuff, a knife brush actually calls out in, uh, new poly groups for you and will do a crease. Now, this was a really rough example, but you could see here that it at least kept those poly groups. Another thing too is even just edge detection sometimes will do a really great job of allowing for it to come through and actually remesh and keeping a sharp edge. Now I didn't keep the groups, but with, with keep groups and smooth groups, it did an okay job of doing that, but just detect edges actually found the nice plane changes between here and here and it kept those really sharp edges for me. So depending on how you actually are approaching this, if you have like a Dynamesh model, let's actually control Z this up a little bit. So if you have a Dynamesh model, this is where like, again, uh, a knife curve would come in and let's say you're making a fun little shape. So you're coming through like such and you're even, you're even feeling kind of fun. Let's do B radius. Let's come through here like such and let's actually cut this guy like this, and then let's actually cut this guy like that. So now we have this here. This is where detect edges can be a really good thing. And you can even probably start with a higher target poly, but that detect edge is gonna do a really good job on seeing those different plane changes and then coming through. And again, if you do have a combination between detect edges and keep groups, then you can get some pretty good results really quickly. Um, there is a chance though that, you know, depending on how much target polygons you're going for, try increasing that a little bit. Maybe see if you have like, let's say you're trying to do five and five is not good enough, then maybe go with like 10 or go up a little bit. A lot of people try to keep it very, very low, which is ideal, but sometimes in my experience, I find that if I start with like a higher number, like 20, 25, and then work my way down, it actually helps get decent results. See here, it, it probably just was not enough information. So maybe even try that. Let's try like, fifth, ooh, let's try 15, yeah, 20. We'll just start with 20, like I said. Go to adapt, let's give this another shot. But again, those nice detect edges, keep groups. So you're getting a little bit better information here, but there is gonna be a little bit of rounding. Um, what you could also end up doing before, if you're working with Dynamesh, kind of just throwing the book at you. So hopefully, <laughs> this is being recorded by the way. Um, you could also do a Dynamesh with polish on it. So let's actually kick this down maybe to like 120 and pol polish this up a little bit. Doing a Dynamesh with polish will give you nice, nice sharper edges on that. And so maybe do like a Dynamesh polish if you're coming from Dynamesh, then come through, do a detect edge and see if that helps you out in any way, shape, or form. So definitely give those options a chance. Oh, I totally cached, <laughs> I totally cached from another model. That's funny. Whoop. Okay. No, don't cache from that. Great, wonderful. Ah, uh, no problem. Uh, do you recommend Z model to help clarify polygroups with flat islands too? If you can, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, that's a really great way of doing it. Anytime you can clarify a model with polygroups, it's going to help you out. ZBrush really thrives with polygroup control. Yep, yeah, add, ex uh, add extra poly edges near the edges to the crease. They'll help you with get the sharp corners. 100%. Yeah, the poly loops. Yep, 100%. That's another great way of doing it. And so here, actually, I'll demonstrate that. It's a great tip. So if you have something like this, actually, let's go even more aggressive. I This pole up here at the top. I'm actually gonna go ahead, turn on the gizmo, and I'm gonna actually gonna pick this poly cube. This poly cube is a better proper cube if you're doing some hard surface modeling that's within the gizmo. So you can actually come through. And so yeah, with that edge here, like if I were to subdivide this, it's gonna start smoothing that, right? And the only way to prevent that is to go under geometry and under, next to the divide button, you have the smooth button. And if I start dividing that, 
Here, it's not going to smooth, but let's say you, again, you wanna be able to control that, or you want a nice controllable uh, smooth edge. Uh, so what you can do is go to insert, inset, hover over an edge, hold spacebar, insert, insert edge loop, and then come through here, and you start really like pushing, and depending on how close you get, so if I were to subdivide right now, let's turn smooth back on, subdivide, you can see here that comparison to this edge, this edge is not as smooth, it's more sharp. And so you can really push that bar like as close as possible. If, to the point too though, where if it gets like, you're like on top of each other, just crease those edges. So again, doing that thing where you come up here and you do your poly paint, I'm sorry, your poly groups and auto groups or group by normals rather, and then you have these different, and then you could just crease these edges at that point too. Um, so, or you could do is highlight all the edges that you want to have polygroup. Like maybe I want these two here to come through. So I'm gonna come through like this, blah, 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 blah. And then make this its own polygroup. This will also be very helpful in identifying that. This works better on a, on a mesh like this rather than a DynaMesh. Uh, so DynaMesh is too dense for Z modeler. So you wanna make sure you can kind of control that, but this will be able, a really great way to select those loops. And if for whatever reason, you're coming through here and you actually like want to uh, change any of these loops, you can actually come through. Do, do, do. That's not working today. There we go, thank you. My pen is just all over the place today. What is happening? There we go. So if you wanna actually clean these out, so let's say you made a polygroup selection and you wanna actually eliminate that polygroup selection. So you're coming through here and you say, okay, this is one polygroup. If I want to actually change this back to red, like I didn't mean to do this one, just come through here, press hold alt, let go, hold shift, and now you can actually clean those polygroups back up. So you have full control over polygroup selection. So lots of different ways to go through. What's our time? We got 11.45, so we are 15 till, which is awesome. Great, awesome, glad you liked it. Uh, when doing hard surface, is it good to change the direction of the edge loops so that they don't get too close to each other? Mm, not quite sure if I understand exactly what you're saying, but edge loop control is always important. It's always super important. So you wanna make sure that you do control the way your edge loops are flowing. And let's say, for example, here, let's actually do this. Let's insert a sphere for you real quick and let's just like blow this up. And then I'm gonna just be, gonna be crazy and we're gonna do a, uh, well, let's turn, let's turn that B radius off here. Let's come through and like, let's say this section, again, let's give me a different group right here. So let's say I wanna actually control the way the edge loop of this flows, because maybe, just maybe I'm having something like this, this really nice, interesting shape, right? So if I wanna control the way the edge loop flows, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, the way I recommend is actually going to Z remesher guide. So B, Z, and then R for Z remesher guide. And what you can do in this case is actually start drawing out. I want my edge loops to flow in this direction. And then I want this to flow in this direction. So just giving it an idea, do, 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 do. And the rest, okay, that should be fine. This will tell ZBrush what's happening. So then when you go to your geometry Z remesher, you actually go to curve strength, which is default at 50 with adaptive size, meaning it's gonna do its best to control the actual curves that might be on the mesh as well as adapt to it. But I want to tell ZBrush, listen, okay? Listen, ZBrush. I want you to listen. I want you to really prioritize these curves. So up my curve strength and maybe even to down my adaptive size crease. So I'm gonna up my curve strength and this is going to tell zero mesher, okay, when I zero mesh at this junction, I want you to really keep in mind that these curves exist and I want you to follow that. Go ahead and then hit zero mesher. And then once you get zero mesh, if we look closely, you can actually see that the curves are starting to flow just a little bit around that area. We're having some come through and then we're having some loops around and it's coming through. And then let's actually do one better. Let's say, hey, while you're doing that, make sure you keep the poly groups and you know what, even do one better and do detect edges. So do all that for me. And now we have something like this. 
that's allowing us to really control the flow of our edge loop, control the sharpness and the actual zebra mesh of the poly groups and the edges all at the same time. And this gave me a much better result than what I was looking for the first time. So all of these little things really do help you build that model up as much as possible. And then again, we can come through and say, hey, all right, let's go lower than that. Let's go lower than that. How low can we go? All right, that's good. That's gonna be my, no, my now low poly. And you can see where my edge loops have flowed because we told it with the zero measure guide to follow that curvature. And that really helped control my edge loops. So there you go, yep. No, not a problem, yeah. So there you guys go, <laughs> perfect. All right, whoop, whoop. Yeah, those, that's a lot of fun. I love doing that a lot. That's a really handy way. All right, let's go back. We got just a couple minutes left. Let's go ahead and delete this cube here. Oop. And I'm gonna go ahead and doop -a doop boop. Let's just hide this for now. I may wanna keep that. Okay, where were we working on hands right now? Great question, by the way, super great question. Let's come through here now. Let's weld these hands together, okay? So I'm actually gonna come through and same thing as we ever was. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my clay build up with my intensity at zero. Okay, I'm actually gonna frame this by hitting F and then I'm going to turn off my symmetry. And let's do remesh by union. Bada bing, bada boom. That's looking pretty good. Let's turn symmetry back on. And let's turn on our uh, Sculptress Pro. And now let's go through and let's start welding these bad boys together. Yes, these little phalanges. So I'll be continuing this character off stream, but I would say more than likely next week, I will show, I'll showcase the, the process and I'll probably be building a little bit of set deck stuff as well, because this character is gonna be living in a mushroom world, which is super awesome. And I'm actually collaborating on this piece with a colleague of mine goes by Ellie Wade. If you're interested in Redshift tips and tricks, uh, she works here at Maxon as well. She does a lot of really fun stuff with Redshift uh, and Cinema 4D. So definitely check that out. But we're gonna be doing a whole project together, showcasing all the neat little uh, tidbits on how projects can be bounced back and forth between the different, uh, the different programs. So and we also are gonna be throwing in a little bit of substance love in there. So I'll showcase the stuff that I do when that stuff gets done as well. So now we got something like that. Let's come through here down at the bottom. Let's go with our deformation, polished by groups. You guys are starting to see a pattern here, but believe you me, it is there. And I'm actually going to isolate these guys. Okay, that's actually doing something. So let's come here like this. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mask. Sorry, I'm gonna mask this guy off. Let's switch this guy out. I want to make sure I see these little see these little points right there. So I'm actually going to mask this, and then I'm going to make that all one poly group. Because that little bit is that's going to throw zebra mesher with key groups up for a little bit of a loop, and I don't want that. And then, yeah, that should be pretty good. Okay, let's come through here, and then let's do our zebra mesh. So I'm going to frame these hands, and then let's go here zebra mesher. I'm going to do target group. Uh, let's keep it about the same. Let's go with let's go with 10 actually and let's do keep groups and let's see remesh. Um, no, if you're still on a legacy perpetual then yes. Um, if you're if you're still running 2022.0.7, then yeah, you um, the unless you have it through Maxon and you have the Maxon one no, you won't be able to. Um, you won't be able to bounce back and forth without the without the program itself. But the tips I'm showing here today is all ZBrush and all the stuff I'm doing today, with the exception of um, the stuff I've called out as 2023. You can do in 2022. And if you guys still have any 2022 questions, please let me know because I can answer them as well. Okay, coming through these loops, these loops look pretty decent, but now notice I lost this loop here. So I'm actually gonna come through, uh, I'm sorry, not the loop, I lost the poly group. 
So I'm going to come through here, grab this, and come on, pick a different color, something I'm happy with that doesn't look similar to anything else. And then, uh, oh, what are you doing here? Let's do that guy right there. Okay. Okay. All righty. Let's come through. Yeah, you're going to do that to me today. I can't seem to grab the proper loop. All right, there we go. Yay, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's do that one more time. Let's half this. I don't know. Hey, yo, I have no idea where it's originally from. <laughs> Please tell me. I'm curious. Before the before before we leave, we'll all learn something. I like this. I like it. All right, here we go. This is cool. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, Z, the, the Sculptress, and then I'm going to come through here. Okay, this actually might have been too low. Yeah, that was too low for that loop there. So let's go back a single one, keep that there. That should be fine. There we go. And again, his fingers are pointy. So now I'm going to just, I'm just going to smooth to keep these here. But now what I'm going to end up doing is, again, this is why I isolated this. I'm actually going to control tap here and I'm going to come through and then I'm going to end up bending his fingers just a little bit, giving him just a little bit of expression. Mask. There you go. You can do it, Ian. You can do it. Okay. Put this kind of in the middle and then bend this down just a little bit. So again, for me, this is something that like this little bit just kind of helps the character come to life for me. And I really just like to take that extra second to just, just add a little bit of something, something to it. Just feels a little bit more real to me. I'm also a big advocate of like test posing when, uh, before I get into too crazy details, just to kind of see what the character is going to look like and then fix any forms that way. But today we're just kind of blocking stuff out. There we go. And then let's actually come back here. So he has nice little little puny arms here, but I'm gonna use the inflate brush, scale this up just a little bit. Kind of come through here, just do a little bit of an inflate. So so we have this character mostly blocked out. Oh really? That's super cool. It's a, I, I, I don't want to butcher the name, just to <laughs> I'm afraid to, to, to mispronounce it, but that is really, really cool. I'm actually going to look this up off stream because you've now piqued my interest. I like stuff like this. I'm such a huge fan of, uh, of learning these things. So thank you for sharing that. That's super, super cool. The axle total. Perfect. Nice. I've now made a Google spot for it. That's so cool. Thanks for sharing that, dude. All right. So we're pretty much it for the day. I usually go for just a couple hours, but before I go, I want to do one other thing. Like I did with the fingers, I want to do the exact same thing with um, with his arms. I want to create the poly groups, hitting Control W, so that I have different poly groups for stuff like where his legs are going to be. So like here is wrong one that's not what I meant let's actually come through here and I'm going to do this guy because the more likely he's going to have some pretty big boots but this is the start so blocking out a character pretty quick pretty simple lots of fun hopefully you guys enjoyed this stream a lot um, next week again we're going to go more in depth with some of the actual uh, anything I do off stream as well as um you know, getting into some uh, like suit creation because I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna do a couple like, I'll probably do like um, an example off stream and then I'll come on stream and I'll show you how I did the suit itself and we'll build the suit next. But to get something that's from a sphere to here, not too bad. So really, really cool stuff. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and hit save. Awesome. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, Emperor Cheese Leonard. Yo! All right, everybody, that's going to be it for the day. Again, thank you guys so much. Um, what we're going to do, too, just real fast, if, again, you're new to ZBrush, 
uh, or you'd like to get a getting started series in ZBrush and I want to make sure that I'm right so I'm going to say something first I'm going to look I'm going to blow this up big screen yes this getting started series is in 2022 version we did not release 2023 at the time of recording. So if you're new to ZBrush and you have a perpetual or a legacy version of ZBrush 2022, this will definitely work for you as in everything in this, how it's getting started is in the 2022 version. So that's gonna be super, super awesome. And again, um, if you missed her demystify series where you actually want to kind of see um, Anna Carolina go in a little bit more in depth with that then here is also that video so that way you guys have some information and you guys can see this whole series that's going through I think this is really cool I like that we're expanding on our software going into other software and showcasing pipelines for everyone to, to kind of see how we do it so therefore it gives you a little bit more guidance the Maxon training team uh, YouTube on top of this pix of, uh, of our original Pixelogic YouTube really is going to be a great source of information moving forward. So definitely check all that stuff out as well. And then again, I stream every Wednesday from 10 to noon, Los Angeles time. So definitely can't wait to see you guys next week. And also on that Maxon training team, there is a series called Ask the Trainer. And I will be on that tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Maxon training team. So if you wanted to come through and see what we do on the Asset Trainer series, come and check that out as well. Lots of great stuff. Definitely want to share it all. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Yeah, the, they do you guys offer the, the convert the annual. It's great, especially if you guys keep coming up with all those great features. Oh yes, slow to we have a lot of really cool stuff coming up. Believe you me, I wish I could scream it from the rooftops, but I can't yet. As soon as I can, you guys will know. <laughs> anyway, that is it. I will talk to all of you guys later. And always, happy sculpting. And I'll see you next Wednesday or tomorrow if you guys show up. So, all right, that is it for me. Bye, everyone.